Have you ever been just surfing across YouTube or Google trying to find a way to keep your animal, trying to figure it out? And as you've looked at all the videos, you've just thought, oh, dang, this is BS. Like, these people are doing too much. There's no way it is actually this hard. This video is for the people who answered yes to that question. I'm going to show you guys my personal experiences with the Eastern or Central Newts. And yeah, I'm going to show you how to do it. And we're going to take a step back from Google because, trust me, there's a lot that Google doesn't tell you and there's a lot that Google tells you too much of. This video will be focused on the breeding and the keeping of newts, eastern or central newts. But if you guys would like to learn more about them, like the difference between central and eastern and everything about their life cycle and all about their lives and, you know, the type of animal they are, I'm going to link the video to that down in the description. Firstly, let's get something straight. Newts are incredibly hardy animals. This hardiness probably comes from their favorite environment being everything you flush down a toilet. These things being almost impossible to kill makes them very great to have as pets. Firstly, the level of the water does not matter that much. Sure, there's probably been some study that says that having it at a perfect level is going to make them breed a little more, but I've had absolutely no problem breeding them in a normal fish tank having a fish tank that's all the way up, or having it down to here. I've tried both, nothing's really changed that much. So for me, it's just easier to have it all the way up. It looks a lot nicer and I have a filter going that just, you know, it makes the tank look really cool. So I can look at them and that's kind of part of it. Now this is only true for the people that found their newt in the adult aquatic form. Odds are this is how you found yours. You were in some disgusting pond, found these newts, didn't know what to do, brought them home and now you're trying to figure out what to do. So if you found them when they're not bright red and they're looking pretty dark, looking pretty dumb, you're good. Now, if you found your newts while they were still growing up and they were bright red, use a terrestrial tank. Use a tank, you know, that I'm using for my adult tiger salamanders for this situation and make sure you provide them with something better than this, an area for them to swim. So, you know, once they're growing up into an adult, they can transform into that. Maybe make it, you know, half and half. And newts are only able to breed once they've reached their adult form, so, you know, don't even worry about breeding them until they've grown up to this. The bottom of the tank is not that important to get them to breed. You know, I've tried a lot of different stuff, but since, you know, their wild, natural, you know, mud, mud bottom doesn't really work in a fish tank because, you know, it'll just get disgusting, my next bet was sand. So I use sand, and sand has treated me the best. Sand provides the newts with a soft bottom to walk on, you know, not too bumpy, but also it'll sink to the bottom and not make the tank disgusting. It also works as a good filter layer. It's able to hold a lot of muck without making the tank look bad. I actually just found this sand from outside, but before I had sand, I was just using white rocks. They're actually green because of how much algae they've had on them, but yeah, those work fine too. I had a lot of babies come from just rocks. I had them come from the sand. They're not picky. So let's cut to once you've gotten your bottom in, you've gotten your light, you've gotten your filter. I mean, you've gotten your light if you want to look at them. They also don't care if there's a light. You've gotten a lid on the tank, otherwise they'll crawl out. Once you've done that, you're going to be looking at plants because plants are one of the things that are actually very important to get them to breed. All the plants I have in this tank are actually from a pet store, and quite honestly, I'm still working on my plant knowledge, and I don't know the names of any of them. Wild plants are very important. Newts are also not picky about the plants. You just need to provide them with a lot of areas to lay eggs, a lot of little crevices that they can put them. You know, they like underneath these types of leaves and stuff. You can find those plants at pet stores that you can plant and, you know, they'll grow because these are thriving, these plants that I've planted. And if you're feeling really cheap and you just have one of these sitting at home, that'll work too. I've had like probably 10 larvae hatch from these because they'll lay eggs on these little bristles. Even though it's just a piece of plastic, they'll still do it. They just need an area to lay eggs that's really sheltered. And the more, the merrier. Filling up your entire tank with plants is a great idea because the more shelter there is, the more the larvae will be able to thrive once they hatch as well. Newts will actually eat others' larvae or their own larvae on accident, so you want to give them a lot of room. If you're giving them enough room and doing stuff correctly, it will become bioactive. You don't have to worry about taking the larvae out because there'll be so many hiding spots. Not all of them will survive, but some of them will, and some of them will be hidden, and they'll grow up. Now, if you really would like to dedicate time, you can also take the larvae out. The larvae tend to be pretty hardy as well, except not as hardy as the adult version. 
I'm gonna get back to what to do with the larva in a second, but let me explain the rest of the stuff to help them breed. Once you have the newts in the tank with a bottom layer of your choice, plenty of plants and not too overcrowded. Like for this, I have 10. Google tells you to have like two per 10 gallon, but you can put way more than that. It'll work fine. I have 10 newts in a 20 gallon long tank. Yeah, you can put a little more if you want to. Once you have that, really the only other main thing is food. Newts being the hardy animals that they are can go for weeks to even I think months without eating. But will they breed if you're not feeding them often? Probably not. What I found, the best way to keep them breeding is probably feed them about every other day. Although Google says like no more than twice a week, I think every other day is pretty good. It keeps them fat and they tend to breed a lot more when they're full. You can put a lot of food in there, but if your tank hasn't been cycled, you should probably be keeping track. But since this tank is like years of cycle, I don't really have to worry about it. And newts are pretty hardy, so they're probably gonna be fine even if you don't take the stuff out, but you probably shouldn't give them too much at the beginning until your tank has been running for a bit so the ammonia level won't spike. For the food of choice, they're not too picky, but they like smelly and moving food, and it has to be pretty small. So while this isn't moving, it kind of simulates moving stuff. So I just give them frozen bloodworms, a little chunk. You should, you can usually get those at pet stores. That's what I like using. If you find tiny worms outside, you can also give those to them as long as they're not too big. They'll love those worms for an extra treat, and it, you know, it boosts them. I usually just give them like this piece of a chunk about every two days or so. All right, now that you've set up everything you need in order to breed them, let's go back to the larva and the eggs and what to do. This was a big problem for me when I first started breeding them. I did not understand it all. It's a common misconception that these newts lay eggs that look like frog eggs or salamander eggs. They don't look like that at all. They almost simulate sort of like a tiny spider egg. They look like they're in like two at a time, you know, there can just be a one single one. Sometimes they'll lay them next to each other. But the point is they lay them once at a time and they're just these little tiny like brown eggs. Sadly, I just set up this tank so I don't have any new eggs yet that I can show you guys an example of, but yeah, the eggs are very small and they're sometimes really hard to see. But you know, once they hatch, you'll be able to find the larva if you really, really love The larva loves to hide and it won't really move that much at the beginning because it's just so scared. And yeah, it'll stay, you know, if you have sand, it'll be really hard to see because it'll be like, you know, hidden camouflage with the rocks or it could just be hiding in the plant depending on where you have. Now you can either leave your larva in there or you can take it out. You just have to be super gentle because they're tiny and very fragile at the beginning. While they can stay in any sort of water if you touch them too much or you know, if you like hurt them on accident, that can hurt. My main point is that when they're super small, you might just accidentally poke them and hurt them. So, you know, they're hardy in the water, but they're not always hardy when you're touching. If you decide to take the larva out, you can just put it in any sort of container. You just have to make sure you're actively giving it some microorganisms in there, maybe just dumping in some water from a tank that you know has some good bacteria built up, or just from the pond that you got them from is great. And from there, the larva can grow up, whether it's in the tank or in a container. After a few months, it should stop looking like a tiny miniature axolotl and just look like a miniature newt. It probably won't have its color yet. It'll just be dark, but very, very tiny. That's when you're gonna want to move it to a terrestrial tank but you're gonna wanna put it in the The water. point is you're gonna wanna have a very damp tank that you're spraying basically every day. And you're gonna wanna have an area where it can freely go from water to land so that when it's ready, it'll go into its terrestrial state. Until it's grown to the point where it can fit small insects in its mouth, it's gonna continue to feed on microorganisms. So in the water area that you have, you're gonna wanna make sure you're putting in water with a lot of microorganisms. Don't get discouraged if it's taking a while. They might take a little bit longer than they do in the wild just because you know you can never have them having perfect conditions, but eventually they will turn red. They will start to turn red and they will start to come out and they will start to be terrestrial. Their terrestrial state can last years, two to three years usually until they turn into their adult state, which goes back into aquatic. And mode. if you're not providing them with an area to go into water, once they reach their adult state, they'll last a lot longer. I mean, they can last a really long time in their terrestrial state. And if they don't really have a reason to go back into their adult state where they're back in the water and back aquatic, they probably won't or for a very long time. Yeah, so that right there is basically my brief summary of how to breed Eastern or Central newts. If you guys have any questions, please ask me in the comments. I'll answer every single one. This is just my first video. I have a lot of animals, not just in here, but in other areas too, that I will be showing you guys and I will be explaining how to do stuff. So make sure you're hitting that subscribe button so you guys can, you know, learn more and I can help you guys out. 
and I'll answer any questions again. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed and hit the like if you enjoyed. See you guys later.